Greetings everyone, Brett here with Hammerhead Model Making, and I hope you are comfortable because this is going to be another long video. Today we are going to be tackling the Kinetic S2 Tracker, and I've gotten a few um, aftermarket items for this kit. I really wanted to go all out on this kit, and so, so we have some res kit wheels, we have four sets of Edward Photo Etch, we've got some aftermarket decals, because I'm doing this as a Royal Australian Navy Tracker. And uh, later on in the video, you will see that we actually have some 3D printed things as well. So to get things started, we're gonna dive straight into the photo etch. And that, in that means we are going to be sprucing up the cockpit. Now, <clears throat> I made this knowing that a lot of this would probably never be seen again. Um, but that's kind of one of the fun things about filming all of my projects is I still get to document all of it and, and get to show you the work that I am doing. And plus, I know that it's there, and, and so I take some pride in that. Um, but I get for a lot of people, like, doing work that will never be seen again is, is kind of like, why waste the time? Totally get it. This is just what I like to do. Um, so we, we start off by removing details from a lot of the kit parts. Now, the kit parts aren't necessarily poorly, well, at least the instrument panel wasn't actually poorly detailed. It looks pretty good. But the photo etch just adds a lot more detail. Uh, a lot more realism to it, I think. Um, but as far as the rest of the cockpit, it definitely needs the photo. There's a lot of detail that, that Kinetic does not add into this kit in the cockpit. I mean, really, the floor is just a blank piece of plastic. The, the uh, rear bulkhead there is just a blank piece of plastic. You get a couple seats, and that's it. Um, but in researching this project and looking at pictures of the actual cockpit, there's there it's a very, very busy cockpit. There's a lot going on in there. And um, so having the uh, photo etch was, was really helpful, at, at least in terms of be, act, acting as a base for detailing up this kit. They, I will eventually add some, some scratch built stuff as well, just to, to really kind of flesh out the, the detail in this cockpit. Here you can see I'm adding a bunch of photo etch to the seats. The actual seats on the tracker were, were quite, um, I don't want to say delicate, but didn't have a lot of bulk to them. Whereas the, the kit plastic part here is just literally just this giant block of a seat. So the photo etch helps kind of give the idea that the seats are a little bit more, um, uh, there's a little bit less to them than there actually is. And, and it does help. I, I think if you really wanted to go, you know, super detailing level, I would basically rebuild the seats from scratch. Um, and I think that would help provide a much more realistic look to them but this will so I'm, I'm happy with with the look that this that the photo etch gives me um, here I am adding some details that I noted in reference pictures and I'll be honest I'm not a hundred percent sure what this detail is I think it might be like uh, an attachment for oxygen for the pilot and co-pilot but I'm not a hundred percent sure um, if uh, if you know you know and, and let me know what this actually is supposed to be for um, Otherwise, I'm just going to assume it's some kind of oxygen thing. But uh, here we're adding the rudder pedals. These just get attached to the back of the instrument panel. Um, and then you kind of adjust them later to, to how they would be oriented. So, so here you can see also that photo etch piece going on the floor really adds a lot of great detail to the floor. Um, the, the kit does not provide any kind of center console. Uh, I even though the, the tracker had a rather robust center console so fortunately Edward comes to the rescue here so this this is single part and it's got a lot of folds and it kind of took me a little while just to make sure I was getting all the folds in the right places but I did eventually figure it out and uh, it does add nice little extra detail to um, to the cockpit so I'm happy with it um and uh that it folded up correctly and just as it as as advertised so here we can see that's just going in here and um, again this is much one of those things you'll never see it once it's actually done at least like all the little that nice little side detail but i like it uh edward provides some uh you know boxes and and various things that go on the uh, rear bulkhead here so this is this is all kind of fun to to build up and and uh, get this all attached and uh, it just kind of helps busy this up and unfortunately this this little box here that i'm putting on it gets completely covered by by the pilot seat and this little box here by the co-pilot seat 
but um, you know, if you can shine, if you shine a flashlight down in the cockpit, you can still see it technically. Um, get these little, I, I think these are like pouches that go on the back bulkhead here. Another thing I wanted to do was replicate the the sidewall detail. So there was there was a bit of a structural thing going on on the sidewall, and then it's all covered in like soundproofing, uh, like quilted material. And so I wanted to try my hand at doing this, and I ended up finding some um, sheets of tin foil that had a quilted pattern embossed into them. And I, I'd had this this piece of tin foil sitting in my spare parts bin for like a decade, just waiting to be used on a project like this. So I was I was pretty excited to be able to actually finally get to to use this quilted, uh, you know, aluminum foil. And, uh, and I honestly can't even remember at this point, I can't even remember where I found it. I found it literally decades ago, but so here I'm just trimming this to, to size here. And, um, you can see, you can kind of see that faint embossing on there, this quilted pattern that I think actually does a pretty good job of replicating that soundproofing material that would have been on the inside of the, the cockpit here. Um, so this just gets glued on over that rib detail. And uh, so you, you'll be able to see a little bit of that rib detail showing through. Uh, that's at least that's from what like how I could see it from the reference pictures I was looking at, at, at of real trackers. So um, now we can move on to the nose wheel well. Again, uh, Edward adds a lot of great detail here with their photo etch set. And there's um, there's a lot of great reference pictures online of the tracker landing gear wheel wells so i i was able to at least what i think do a fairly accurate job here of adding extra details here and to be honest like the actual you know the top part of that that uh, kit part is is actually pretty detailed it's just missing sidewall detail um so that's really what's what's needed here along with a lot of like pipes and hoses and and you know, hydraulic lines and things like that need to be added in here as well. So here I'm just using some rather large uh, solder uh, to to add those those larger pipes, and then now I'm just using some some steel wire here for some of the smaller stuff that goes on the bot or on the. I, I mean, I say the bottom, but it's actually the you know the the inside roof of the wheel well. So this was a lot of fun. I just, I did a lot of pre-bending with these wires to get them the right shape before getting them into the wheel well. So it saved me a lot of headache trying to try, you know, trying to bend those while they were in there. And, uh, and then everything's just secured by, with super glue. So there, there's, now you can get a good idea of what that detail looks like in there. And then uh, do, there was a couple of sets of like braided, lines electrical wires i assume running through the the uh, landing gear bay as well so i just twisted together a couple of strands of that steel wire and then thread it through some holes that i drilled and then it's just a matter of getting it bent into shape you know to to conform to the the diameter or the um you know the the size of the landing gear wheel well uh there's some more additional detail that needs to be added to the front side walls unfortunately edward only gives you photo etch for that back half not the front half so um just using some strip styrene here to add a little bit more detail to the side walls around the front part of this and uh, yeah i think it's looking pretty good uh so moving on to the nose wheel strut uh, we can add some detail here as well so edward provides a little bit of photo etch here mainly for the the scissor strut there and the tie down loops. Um, but there was some additional details that I wanted to add on my own. Specifically, there's a there's actually a large, I what I assume is like a piston um, connected to the nose landing gear. So the, that was pretty prominent in the reference pictures I saw. So I'm just using some um, little bit of styrene rod and then some solder to replicate that and uh, adding on the attachment point here for that that piston. I, I assume it's some kind of actuator that you know helps lower and raise the landing gear. I'm not sure, but it's there. So I, I wanted to make sure I got it added in there. Um, because the, the nose wheel sits really far forward on the tracker and it's quite prominent. So I wanted to make sure those details were there. Moving on to the, in, onto the torpedo bay. This was probably one of the biggest disappointing areas of the kit because all you get is just that blank empty space and that's it. Um, but looking at reference pictures of the actual 
Torpedo Bay. It's very busy. So fortunately, there's an entire Edward set just dedicated to the Torpedo Bay. And it's a lot of photo edge because there's a lot of rib detail you're putting in here, structural detail, uh, lots of little parts that go into here. So um, this probably took me a good two or three evenings worth of, of sitting down at the bench and getting all these tiny little photo etch parts bent and into place. And, and all, a lot of them are different, so you really have to be careful uh, keeping track of which part you're putting and where so that it fits correctly and doesn't obstruct any other parts that have to go in later. And uh, so, there, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. Plus, because I can't help myself, some additional wiring work that needs to go in there as well. So again, we're just using that steel wire. I believe this is 28 gauge steel wire. Uh, so it's really small. Uh, securing everything with super glue and uh, just to make sure that it all stays where it needs to. Uh, just bend this piece over just so that it, it stays a little bit more secure that way. And then um, hit it with a little bit of zip kicker. So this will just help get that super glue to cure almost instantly. And then we can just continue on with our bending here. So just kind of a, it just take, it takes some time, go slow. Um, but you, you, it, it turns out good, I think. Um, uh, in this, right in the shot, I'm actually using my new clippers to clip that wire. And I really shouldn't have done that. I have a set of old clippers that I should have used. So don't do what I don't, don't, don't use your nice plastic clippers to cut metal wire. It'll, it'll chip and dull your blade, your clippers really fast. Um, I also had to scratch build the actuators for the actual landing gear bay doors. Uh, they're not included in either plastic or photo etch. So, all right, with a lot of the internal stuff done, we can get to painting. Here I am using Vallejo's um, surface primer to prime this. And this will give us a nice good black coat to start with. Uh, I am going to go for a used look, but not necessarily like an overly abused look. So pretty much everything gets a nice good solid coat of this primer. I did thin this just a little bit. I find that it's just a little bit on the thick side, uh, unless you want to spray it like 40 PSI, which I don't necessarily like doing. Um, so thinning it out helps a little bit. I just used uh, a kind of a generic acrylic thinner for that. And that seems to, and I'd probably put about 20% thinner in there and it seems to work pretty good. So with the primer layer down, we can hit it with a nice coat of light gray. Uh, this is a pre pretty generic light gray uh, and I think it works pretty good for, for the application. So we're just gonna give this a nice good coat, um, allowing a little bit of that black primer to show kind of in the, the crevices and, and the shadowed areas. But uh, pretty, for the most part, this is just like a full body coat of gray paint. And pretty much everything inside the cockpit gets this color. Uh, now we can hit it with some detail paints. We're just using some Vallejo brush paints, in this case black, to paint some of these details. And just kind of slowly working my way through the whole cockpit. Uh, you can also see in this painting, I actually added some more details to the back wall. Namely, the, uh, the there's lights that sit over the pilot's shoulders, um, as well as some additional wiring that goes in there as well. The soundproofing material had a slightly different color gray to it than the than the actual painted part. Uh, so here I'm just using a, a slightly different light gray from Vallejo to to paint that, um, and just kind of create that little the different tones there. Uh, seat cushion was kind of this dull orange picture in most of the pictures I saw. I did see some ones that were like, you know, khaki green kind of a color, but I liked the this burnt orange color just to kind of help break things up a little bit and change it up a little bit. So that's that's a color called Parasite Brown by Vallejo. And it, I, I do think it's funny that they call it brown because in my to my eye, it looks a little bit more orange, but I think it's I think it's a great color. I, I love using that color. It's also good for rust. Um, and yes, here I am painting all the circuit breakers by hand. That was fun. <laughs> so once everything's been painted, we're going to give it a gloss coat to help protect it and so that we can do a wash on it. So everything just gets a nice, good, solid coat of gloss. And of course, we are using the Alclad Aqua Gloss for this. And uh, make sure you get everything so that you can get your wash in there without ruining your paint job. Um, seat included. You also notice that I, I painted some of the bottom areas of that seat black where the actual seat wouldn't have been just to kind of try and break that big solid chunk of plastic up. Uh, so now we are going through and hitting it, hitting, it, hitting it with a pin wash. This is the ammo MIG um, 
dark brown wash for green vehicles. One of my favorite wash products. Everything gets a nice good liberal coat of it, including the sidewall panels. And I was a little disappointed that the embossed quilted pattern on that um, aluminum foil actually ended up didn't really showing up very well under a layer of paint. So I was kind of bummed, but I guess in the long run, it doesn't really matter because you can't see it anyways once the cockpit's done, but still kind of sad. In, it, you know, in theory, it was a, it was a great product to use, but we can, uh, we can kind of slowly remove the, the excess wash here just with a cotton. This is just a dry cotton bud. Um, I find that you really don't need anything stronger than that. If, if you do come up with an, to an area that's a little troublesome to, to remove that wash, you can put a little bit of an enamel thinner, but you want to be careful because it will eventually pull up the, the gloss layer and your paint layer. So now we're just doing a little bit of chipping. This is, this is just with like a steel color and uh, trying to keep the chipping, you know, around where the pilot's feet would be and, uh, you know, along these like raised edges and along, along those rivets and stuff where it would be easier for it to chip off. And then alongside the, the uh, entryway into the cockpit through that back door. So with all the painting done, we can work on getting all the photo etch added. So here the uh, instrument panel is going on. And like most Edward photo etch instrument panels, it's a multi-layer thing. So you kind of put the base layer on that has all the instrument faces, and then you can put the actual front layer on so those instruments shine through. I think it's a good look. Um, more instrument panel pieces going here. I like there's that I like that there's that big radar screen right in the middle of the the uh, control panel there. Uh, this is the center console. So again, there is no plastic part here provided by Kinetic. It's just kind of open. So it's nice that, they, that the uh, Edward Photo Etch that comes with this. Little handles going on. This is, a, this is always kind of a nerve-wracking thing considering how small they are, but I really do like the, the 3D effect that it gives. That There's a little bit more life to this instrument panel than, than previous. So we can get the uh, control yokes on. And uh, these are just painted off screen ahead of time. Um, they just slot directly into the plastic, so no modifications here needed with either the plastic or the photo etch. And then the uh, the uh, control yokes had a series of buttons, uh, quite a few buttons on them. So I imagine that's actually I'd, <laughs> I couldn't even guess what they're for. I hope that's one of them releases the ordnance and the torpedoes because that's just kind of a cool thing. Um, and then, uh, but yeah. It's, it's fun trying to paint these tiny little details like this. Um, and and it's, it's hard finding the right balance between, you know, overly thick paint and overly thin paint you, because you want, some, you want the paint to flow off the brush onto the little detail, but you don't want it to flood the detail. Um, here you can see a lot of the weight that I tried to add into the nose of this aircraft. I knew going into it that it was going to be tail heavy. I, I'd, I'd kind of heard horror stories online about it. And uh, so I tried to cram as much weight in here as I possibly could to make sure that it wasn't going to be a tail sitter. And I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler. It, this was not close to enough weight. There, there's just there's just so much plastic behind the uh, the, the the rear landing gear that there was just going to be no way I was going to get enough pla you know weight in there to balance that out. But there was a clever solution that I will bring up later in the video. So now we can start getting the cockpit all put together and um, see how how nicely that all comes together and how busy it looks in there and uh, start getting some of the, the the bits on added onto the fuselage before we start getting it all put together. So moving on now, we're going to concentrate on getting the fuselage and kind of all the major components put together. Um, you do get the option of positioning this uh, ray dome in either the extended or the retracted position. I chose to do the retracted position position since it would be, I was going to have my tracker on the ground. Um, and uh, the, you actually do get a couple of options in this kit, which are kind of nice. Um, the, the radome being one of them. Um, here, we're just uh, getting the fuselage has put together. The overall fit here was pretty good. Um, but in spite of that, I, it still ended up being kind of a chore to take care of the, the seam uh, between these two fuselage halves. It required a lot of sanding and filling. Um, so that's, I, I think if I were to do this again another time, I'd actually, I'd actually remove the locating pins. And um, yeah, I didn't film this part, but this is the, the canopy 
uh, there was a lot of photo etch and scratch building that went into there. Um, and it's interesting because there's actually two halves that you glue together, but they had to do that in order to get the, the bubble window um, of, the, of the side windows. And like I just said there, lots of lots of sanding to get that blended in, that, that big clear piece blended in there. But we did get there eventually. Uh, but it was literally hours and hours of sanding to get that in. Uh, nose cone going on. This fit pretty good. There's a natural panel line there, so you don't really need to do any filling there. Uh, a lot of little lumps and bumps that need to go on to the fuselage as well, uh, including these vents that go on the side there. Um, I assume that's for cooling uh, electronic equipment in there. Um, another option that you get in the kit is to have either the extended or retracted um, uh, magnetic anomaly detector. This sticks out the back end of the airplane. I was going to have mine retracted, so I didn't. you didn't need all that extra plastic on there, so I just trimmed that off. Um, with the fuselage halves now together and all sanded and seam lines taken care of, I could start working on a lot of the external photo etch stuff. Um, there was the Edward external set adds a lot of great detail that the plastic doesn't provide. Um, and uh, so I'm really, I, I think even if I was doing it all like closed up, like, you know, you couldn't see the cockpit or whatever, I would still invest in the external photo etch set uh, for this kit. It's just, it's a great, great addition. Um, so we're adding some photo etch details to the tail and rudder here. Um, so we had to sand off the plastic part, you know, or remove it then sand it smooth, clean that all up. Um, and now we get to add the vortex generators. So Edward provides this little template thing that you, um, you know, you, you tape on, get it in the right spot, you tape it on, um, and then trace out these little uh, polygon shapes. And then those will indicate to you where you have to add all of the vortex generators. And there's a lot on there because you have to add them on both sides of the, the tail and the underside of both the of both horizontal stabilizers. Um, so a lot of little pieces, a lot of bending, a lot of gluing, but totally worth it in the end. A great level of detail that the kit doesn't provide. And it's just, I, I was, this was a lot of fun, actually. I enjoyed doing this. It was tedious work, but it was fun. So you can also see here on the undersides of the horizontal stabilizers, there's a lot of them, but it looks good. Um, fit on the horizontal stabilizer was not great. I actually ended up having to do a lot of trimming to get them to sit flush up against the tail at the correct, correct uh, dihedral. So it takes some time. Um, this is another disappointing part about this kit. One of the features of the S2 trackers has got this really large, very powerful searchlight on the wing. And all you get for the kit is just this squared off blank area. There's zero detail in there. Um, when normally there'd be a very large light with a very large reflecting mirror in there. And uh, so we had to, the one of the Edward sets does come with some of the parts, but you do have to do some scratch building for it as well to really bring it up to to level so here's the finished thing um so you can see there's plastic in there there's wire in there there's photo etch in there a little bit of everything but much better than what's offered in the kit you also i also had to add a little shim in there to get it to fit to the wing correctly uh, so that was just a little bit of plastic added in there to get that to sit right so there wouldn't be a huge gap um, another option you get in the kit is the option to have extended or folded wings. And that was kind of one of the things that drew me to this kit uh, was that it actually has a really decent wing fold, uh, fairly detailed. So pretty happy about that. Um, and depending on how you're going to build the kit, they have different inserts in there. From what I can tell, it looks like if you're going to do the wings extended, that actually has a pretty strong uh, insert that goes in there to keep both halves of the, the wing together good. Um, the kit is lacking detail for engine exhaust. So you, you saw me drilling holes there. Eventually I will add in some uh, copper tube to, to represent the engine exhaust. Uh, here we go. Uh, so I just cut little lengths of copper tubing and uh, super glued them into the holes that I had drilled previously. So there's just a little bit it's poking out. And uh, again, simple detail. It, this really didn't take very long, but um, I think it adds a great deal to the kit. Uh, more photo etch going into the main landing gear bays. Um, 
there's a great a lot of great photo etch pieces that go in here to add a lot of this like rivet detail in between the plastic rib detail and uh so I'm, I'm glad that this i had this because these were pretty you know they're they're really large landing gear wheel wells and they're just really basic so uh between photo etch and adding some scratch built hoses and wires and stuff it helps just kind of busy it up a little bit um, so here we're just using various diameters of solder and wire to add that extra detail in there uh, that you can find in reference pictures out of the box the engine faces actually aren't bad there's a lot of great detail you can see the cooling fin detail in there uh, but it was missing a couple of things that i needed to add so <clears throat> various bits from the spare parts bin to to build up these these radial engines and then additionally we have some photo etch from edward to add just that little extra level of detail and uh finally we can add some ignition wires this is just done done with lead wire if you've if, if you've seen my tutorial on how to do this uh, i'll link it down below but i do offer a tutorial on how to detail up radial engines um a lot of photo etch going on the underside of the wings. You can see that big, large white streak on the back flap there. So Kinetic, they did this really weird thing where the upper side of the wing, and it was true for the tail as well, um, wraps around the underside. So it has a big seam line running right through the middle of the flap. And I just thought that was a really odd design choice for them to make because it required a lot of cleanup to get that to look okay. Um, here we're just building up the engine nacelles um, and overall the fit here was not as bad as I was expecting it to be still requires a lot of sanding and filling but um, I think it could have been worse it was mainly just leveling it out as opposed to like you know really having to fill large gaps or large steps um, so you can see there I've, I've already done the filling and sanding on the back side of that engine nacelle so you can just kind of see where it needed some putty but I mean, honestly, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. So now we're just adding some various details to the engine nacelle. The part that I'm gluing right there, those are actually smoke generators. Um, and then there's various like cal you know, openings for intake, air intake, cooling, that kind of stuff. Edward does provide some metal photo etch uh, cowling pieces. So we could put those in the open, open position um, just to kind of create a little bit more dynamic look to the engine to sell and uh, so looks pretty good I think um, another little detail I wanted to add to the wings with because the wings were going to be open was all the little like attachment lugs for when the wings close I uh, wanted to drill those all out so this is this is kind of nerve-wracking because it's a really small piece of plastic but I think it really helps here uh, flap actuators going on this is again provided with Edward photo etch and uh, I like the detail it looks pretty good there you can also see i've got the pylons attached and i was able to dig out some sway braces from the spare from the spare parts and i get those added on as well i'm not going to have any ordnance on here and you'll see re, you know later on in the video why uh, as part of the diorama but so i wanted to at least make sure to have those p those details here's an interesting part um my buddy James clued me in on this. You need to add some support to the wing fold. The plastic is not enough to support the wing. The wings are actually quite heavy. So I ended up using um, paper clips, steel paper clips to create that extra support in there. And they'll kind of get covered up with some cables to disguise it, but that was really necessary to make sure that the wings would actually sit at the correct angle once they're folded up. So here we, I've moved on to the main landing gear. And again, we have uh, Edward photo etch here to help detail out and replace some of the plastic and then um, go into town with some lead wire to create all of the um, hydraulic hoses brake cables those kinds of things there are a lot of hoses and cables that went on to the main landing gear here and I, this is fun work doing this kind of detailing it can be it can be kind of stressful and it can be a little tedious um, but I think the results are totally worth it in the end. They just It just ends up looking really cool, really busy. So here I'm just using a little bit of Tamiya tape to create the, the straps that would keep all these cables tied together. Um, I do use a little bit of super glue with the tape as well just to make sure that it will stay in place uh, because sometimes the tape just isn't strong enough to stay on long term. 
So I'll usually just put a tiny little dot of super glue on there just to, to lock it down and uh, <clears throat> make sure it works. But um, it, it, yeah, like I said, it was fun doing all the detailing on the main landing gear and it goes a long way. So with all the little stuff done, we can actually start concentrating on painting. So everything got a good solid coat of Tamiya's fine surface primer in gray. I opted not to use black for this because the Royal Australian Navy, at least from the reference pictures I could find, took really good care of their trackers and they were, I, I could not find a picture of a dirty Australian tracker. So uh, going with the, the gray surface primer, wasn't going to do any kind of like model coat underneath the main paint layer. I was just going to paint it on straight. So here we're using Tamiya white to do the white underside and get this all painted up. The nice thing about these, these, you know, 1960s, 1970s era Navy paint jobs is that everything is white underneath the inside on the underside, including the wheel wells. So I was able to paint that all in one go and not have to worry about masking off the wheel wells, which is always something I just, I always, I hate doing that. It's just, it's annoying. Um, so everything on the underside gets this nice, good coat of white. The white was, um, I mixed this about 30% thinner, 70% paint and sprays on beautifully. Um, I mean, it's hard to go wrong with Tamiya paint. And as far, I think as far as white goes, it's, it's probably one of the best whites there is, at least that I've used. Um, and, and I really like using it. There are times when I'll use other whites, but if I'm doing a large project like this, it, it's the go-to. Um, for the under, upper surfaces, we have light gold gray, and I'm using the Vallejo light gold gray. This is my favorite light gold gray. Uh, you just mix in about like 15, 20% acrylic thinner, and this just sprays on so nicely. And I, it's just, of all the light gold grays I've used, this one really just, I, it, it looks the best to me, in my opinion. Um, so... All of the upper surfaces get painted this. You can see here I've, I've actually masked off the um, ailerons and flaps. So all the control surfaces were painted white, even on the upper surfaces. Uh, went for a you know mostly hard edge uh, demarcation between the light gold gray and the white. So I'm using uh, blue tack poster putty to do the demarcation and everything else just gets masked up. Uh, so this won't be like super hard like if, if I was just doing straight tape, but it'll be, it'll be pretty close. Um, I opted over the doing like freehand just because the reference pictures show that it was a pretty, pretty hard demarcation between the two colors. So it's just a matter of going over everything, getting all that paint on. Um, if I was doing like a U.S. Navy tracker, um, which I've seen some pictures of those get really dirty, really beat up, I would definitely go for more of a black basing technique, but this works just great for the Royal Australian Navy. Um, painting up the uh, resting hook here. So this is kind of kind of fun, just black and white stripe paint job here. So I've already painted the white, masked it off, and now I'm doing the black. And then there was these very large black anti-glare panels on the engine nacelles. And instead of just being like, you know, the top quarter or the top half, whatever, it was, it was literally one whole half of the engine nacelle was painted black. So I got that all masked up and we're just using some Vallejo black here. Again, this is thinned about 20% thinner um, just to kind of help it spray on smooth. And I'm spraying just a little under 20 PSI. I'd say probably about 18, 20, 18 PSI for most of my airbrushing here. Um, but I, I think the black does help add, you know, a little bit of color to the overall gray and white scheme. Uh, the front half of the ray dome gets painted black as well. Uh, that required a little bit of tricky masking to, to do that. Uh, and I couldn't, I just really couldn't come up with any other way to do it off the model and then install it later. So that's how we had to do it. And then finally, there's an anti-glare panel in front of the cockpit as well. Um, so this was masked off using really thin strips of Tamiya masking tape to, to create the actual demarcation and then bulked off with some just regular blue masking tape just to prevent overspray. So, um, Again, I think these little bits of black just kind of help break up the monotony of the, the paint scheme. Now we're going to hit everything with aqua gloss. This is to prepare us for decals and eventually weathering later on. So everything gets gets glossed, We everything inside and out. Um, and you want to make sure you get a nice, good, good solid layer on there. Uh, you don't want areas that are patchy just in case there's a decal that goes over it and it doesn't, you might have issues with silvering, you know, that kind of stuff. 
Um, at this point, I realized I could get the inboard portion of the wings attached to the fuselage. Uh, there was, with, with all the complicated painting done, um, I didn't have to worry about masking in between like the nacelle and the fuselage. Um, and I have to give Kinetic huge props here because the wing to fuselage joint is just amazing. It, it fits together so well. And I mean, almost to the point where it, you, you can't even tell that they're separate parts there. So now we can start working on the decals. And um, this was this is actually my very first Australian aircraft or model period. Uh, so this is a lot of fun. And like I mentioned, I was actually um, doing this as a buddy build with a friend of mine on Instagram. Uh, his name's James and he is from Australia. And for our buddy build, we decided that we would build a tracker from each other's Navy. So I was building an Australian tracker. He was building a US tracker. We were both using the same or pretty much the same kinetic kit. And it was just, we had a blast and it was really fun. Um, so it was fun to be able to represent, you know, each other's navies. Uh, and, and bonus, he's, he's a Navy veteran. So, you know, even, even better, but a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a great, great buddy build. And, uh, but yeah, so doing, there's a lot of multi-layer decals going on here where you have to put, you, you have to really be careful on the order that you do decals. Um, and I, if you've watched any of my Jolly Roger videos, um, I, I use the CTA decals for those. And so I've, I'm familiar with how they work. They're very thin. Uh, they can be somewhat fragile, but they react really well to solve a set and they always just go down really nicely. So um, if you just take your time, you'll get great results out of this. Um, this is one of the few kit decals I use and it's to it's basically the, the non-slip texture that would be put on top of the aircraft for the actual, you know, walkway areas. And I was, I was kind of curious to see how this would actually work to see if it was going to be, if it was going to be if it was going to work at all. And I was actually pleasantly surprised how well this decal went down and I didn't rip it. I mean, this is a really large decal. It's, it's, you know, oddly shaped. And I was, I was terrified I was going to rip it, but I managed to get through this whole decal without ripping it. And it went down really well. Um, I know I probably could have masked this off and sprayed it, but uh, I, again, I was just, I was kind of curious to see how well the decal would work. And ultimately if it hadn't worked, I would have removed it and sprayed it, but it ended up working. Now we can get the roundels going on. Uh, there's just, there's something good about those Australian roundels with the kangaroo in it. I like it. Um, and I like that they, they put the roundel on every surface, you know, like with most us aircraft, you'll have like the, the stars and bars on one wing on the upper side and then one wing on the, uh, on the bottom side. But here they just, they throw that thing everywhere. I love it. Uh, you'll never not remember whose Navy it is or whose aircraft it is. So after another quick coat of, coat of gloss to seal in all of our decals, we can go ahead and hit a, hit it with a panel wash. So I'm using this gray interior wash. I didn't want to go really strong with the uh, dark brown wash. Again, just because these these airplanes weren't terribly dirty and beat up. So I, was, I wanted to use this gray wash just to, you know, here's so you know that the panel lines are there. You can see them, but they're not like in your face, super dirty. Um, so this just flows on to all the panel lines and, uh, once it dries, you can, you can wipe it away for these large areas. You just use a piece of paper towel or something or a cloth. Um, and it just wipes right off, but leaves, uh, leaves the wash in the panel lines. And then for some of the more stubborn areas, you can, you can use a cotton bud and absolutely, if you really have to use a little, like very sparing amount of enamel thinner. Um, but you don't want to, you don't want to get it rub it on too hard. Otherwise it will remove your gloss coat. Um, so just kind of going over and making sure everything is removed and looking good and we can start hitting it with some oils. Uh, so just going to do some minor oil streaks, uh, mainly on the wings, especially on the bottom sides of the wings, because the, with the wings folded, you will be, they will be quite prominent. So I just wanted to show a little bit of, you know, hydraulic leakage from the flaps or, you know, things, your grease leakage from whatever. Um, some uh, maintenance hatches with some something leaking out of there just just to show a little bit of wear and weather on it but but nothing extreme uh so we're just putting a little bit dabs of oil paint on and then streaking it back with a brush that's loaded with thinner um and it just kind of helps pull it back i did want to add a little bit of wear to the walkway area 
So here I'm just loading up the area with thinner and then kind of applying like a buff type color. So I just mixed a little bit of brown into white and uh, just to kind of, it helped kind of create, or at least the effect that I'm going for is like a faded effect. And then with the clean brush, we just go in and we kind of start blending it all in um, into that thinner that was already applied. And it'll be fairly subtle, uh, but I think it, it'll do the trick of just kind of showing a little bit of wear where maintenance crews would have been up there walking around um, doing their job. The, the, one, the one bit of weathering that I did notice on reference pictures was, um, you know, radial engines, they leak oil a lot, and they leak grease, and they leak fuel and stains and stuff. So there, there was some prominent, you know, oil stains coming off the engine cowling. Um, so I definitely want to make sure that was represented. And finally, the exhaust. Uh, again, the exhaust was a prominent feature on the reference pictures I saw. And despite how clean the overall airplane was, they still had some pretty prominent exhaust stains. And I, so I'm using a relatively new airbrush to me at the time. Um, and I, I really wanted to try airbrushing the exhaust instead of using my normal technique, which would have been to use oils. Um, cause I, I was really, I really wanted to see if I could get this nice, you know, feathered soft effect going on. So I'm using really thin paint and we're talking like 80% thinner, 20% paint and just slowly building up layer after layer. And this, this requires a little bit of, um, trial and error because if you, even if you just barely spray a little bit too much and it starts to pool, it kind of ruins the effect. Um, so this took a while, took many layers, but I think the overall effect in the end is totally worth it. And I'm sold on doing, um, you know, exhaust effects with the airbrush. I was, I was really happy with how this turned out. We're going to add a little bit of black into the mix just to kind of create some of that sootiness. Um, but yeah, just really happy with how this looks. And uh, I really like the, that soft, you know, almost fluffy edge to it. <laughs> I don't know if fluffy is the right word, soft feathered edge, but it looks good in my opinion. I, I think it worked out right. And it definitely was the, the look that I was going for. So, um, I, I was pleased it, it, I think it turned out great. Um, so again, the, the, the black is also really heavily thinned just because I wanted to be, have a lot more control and really build up those layers, um, and, uh, make sure it was all good. Now I wanted to keep the air, the airframe relatively shiny. Uh, again, that's just, that's just what the reference picture showed, but I wanted to hit the exhaust areas and the walkway area with a little bit of matte coat, just to kind of create a little bit of tonal difference between the shiny body of the aircraft and then areas where like the crew would have doled down that shine a little bit and, and with the non-slip texture on there would have, wouldn't be as shiny. So I'm just kind of splotchily spraying on this, this matte coat just to kind of create a slightly different, um, sheen compared to the rest of the aircraft and you you'll really notice it like if you if you're turning it to the light you'll see like there's this it'll be a nice sheen on the the body and then it kind of dulls down when it hits that um that walkway area so now we can kind of start getting all of our pieces together um removing masking i ended up getting a little bit of like sanding dust on the inside not sure how but it's there, really can't do anything about it at this point. So just kind of have to hope that no one really notices. Cleaning up the uh, masking tape residue with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, just kind of help clean these up. Um, landing gear can be installed. Uh, these pieces, they are a little fiddly, but once you kind of get them in there, they're, they're pretty rock solid um, and look pretty good. The one thing I didn't end up filming, and I apologize for not filming this, is I didn't apologize the res kit wheels, but they look amazing and so much better than the kit parts um and they fit good too so uh, here we got the engines going on we've got the cowlings going on and uh it's all looking good um propellers going on these were those were a challenge to paint because they had five different colors lots of masking uh, a little stressful but got there in the end so like i mentioned earlier on there's no amount of nose weight you can put in this thing to make it sit on its wheels. So I ended up, it actually has a tiny little wheel at the very back of the airplane that I modified and extended the strut so that it actually sits on four wheels now and, and sits evenly. And hey, it's, it's a real feature of the aircraft, so it works. Um, getting all these little pieces added on, painting up the exhaust. This is that parasite brown that I used on the seats. Um, 
it's just a kind of a good like rusty iron kind of color. Um, I will eventually hit the the exhaust stubs with some a couple of washes to kind of bring, tone it down a little bit and darken it up a little bit. But the parasite brown is the base color for this, and, and it's one of my one of my favorite colors to use. Uh, just a just a great color. Um, at the back end of each of the engine nacelles is where they actually kept all the sona buoys uh, that they would drop in their anti-submarine warfare duties. Um, so here just point or just painting on all of the little essentially tabs that would lock the sonar buoy in place um, until it was ready to deploy. Uh, so that was fun getting all those painted, uh, getting a little other, some other details painted here as well since I have the red out. And um, yeah, a lot of great little little details that go on to this aircraft. The windows have this kind of rubber gasket that fits around the, the clear parts. So um, I opted to paint that by hand uh, using a slightly different gray than the bot than the you know the gray of the body just so that it's it's not like super noticeable but you can still tell it's there if you look hard enough um and this is always nerve-wracking doing that kind of painting next to a clear part but now we can start adding antennas um there's quite a few antennas and radio aerials on this aircraft so um and, and lots of different configurations depending on the era that this that your subject was used. So you have to do it, make sure you're looking at a lot of reference pictures to get the correct set of antennas and antenna wires. Um, but I put all I I put, attach all these on unpainted and I paint them by hand later. I just find that easier um, to do and less uh, prone to scratching already painted stuff. Um, another fun little detail here is adding on what I assume are the pitot tubes. Uh, got these two little tubes that go onto the front here that they actually provide you the plastic or the kit part kit provides you plastic parts here, but they're just grossly overscale and, and you can, they're also actually photo etch parts, but they're just weird and flat looking. So uh, a little bit of a 28 gauge wire to the rescue, um, adding on the windshield wipers, uh, this was a multi-part photo etch part uh, with lots of bending, and it was terrifying. Uh, just trying to get them on in the correct orientation was terrifying, but <laughs> eventually I did get there, uh, and those will eventually get painted. Another shortcoming of the kit is the uh, the large landing light that goes in the nose. If you look at pictures in the, of trackers, the, there's actually supposed to be a clear cover that goes over it that's flush with the contour of the nose. Uh, that the kit doesn't provide. So here I'm using some um, UV curing clear resin. And that really kind of solved the issue and uh, really pleased with how that turned out here. So uh, it didn't take very long to cure. And once it was on there, it looks looks great. So now we can start adding our rigging. Um, so there are multiple antenna wires that need to go on this thing at, at different height levels as well. So you, you really got to keep your order of operations here uh, in check so that you're you're not having to do lines under or over other lines. Um, I added a couple of little pins to the tail and one of the horizontal stabilizers to actually have a point to attach the radio wires. Um, this is all being secured with super glue. And uh, this, this, this is always a nerve wracking part for me because it's really easy to accidentally get glue on your nice finish. So you just really have to be careful and take it slow. Um, and there were a couple areas on here that I did, managed to get a little bit of glue on, but I was able to clean it up. Now we can trim the excess. Um, and, and just for reference, I am using like a stretchy nylon line for this. Um, and there we go. All the radio antennas are on. Um, once, once all the super glue is dried, uh, I can go in and you can paint in the, there will be little insulator pieces on some of these wires. So I'm just painting that on with just some thick white acrylic paint. Um, Cause you actually, you actually want it to have kind of a, a raised uh, look to it. And so it just helps using some thick, some thicker paint. Cause it will kind of create a, a little bit of a 3d effect on these, on these wires. That's all done. We can start adding our landing gear doors. Um, these are all just being super glued on. So pretty much at this point, everything that I'm putting on is going to be super glued. I'm not using plastic cement anymore just because it, putting plastic cement over paint can cause issues. 
Um, so just super gluing it on, making sure everything's in place. So the aircraft is pretty much done, but I wanted to add a diorama base. And the idea behind this diorama base comes from a picture that I found while I was looking for uh, reference material of a, it was an American tracker, but it was, it, so you, it was a picture of the tracker and then laid out in front of it was all the ordnance that the tracker could carry. And I just thought that was such a cool picture. So I basically wanted to try and create my own version of that here, but I was gonna be doing it on an aircraft carrier deck. And so here I'm just using, a, a, I think it's a 12 inch uh, round sheet of particle board to represent the aircraft carrier deck. Uh, right now I'm drilling, drilling the holes that will accept the pad eyes, um, giving the whole thing a sanding to kind of create a little bit of a rough texture since most aircraft carrier decks have like a, a rough texture to them to prevent slipping. Um, so I'm just hitting everything. This is like a 400 grit or like a 300 grit sandpaper. And I just kind of go over the whole thing. In hindsight, I probably would do it differently just because I ended up leaving a lot of like circular marks on it. But um, at the time, I was happy with it. Here we're using some photo etch. This is uh, White Ensign Models photo etch. It has various details for doing carrier decks. Um, so we added in all the pad eyes, hit everything with this uh, sea gray or ocean gray color. Um, this is just sprayed on over a black primer base. Uh, really wasn't concerned with, you know, how well the coverage was going on. I was going to add a couple other layers after this as well. Uh, here's some sky gray going on. Uh, plus just, you know, you want different tonal variations. And when you're doing such a large flat area, it's nice to have tonal variations. But you can see a lot of those circular marks that I mentioned. Um, like I said, I'd do it differently if I, if I do it again, which I probably, let's, let's be honest, I most likely will. Um, but I think it conveys the point that I'm going for. Um, here we can mark off some of the, the carrier deck markings. Now, um, I'm going to butcher, butcher this because I know that Australians have a very specific way of saying this name. Um, and I, and I know I cannot do it justice, but this is going to be the HMS, H, HMAS, um, Melbourne. And so I actually looked at deck plans of the ship and found a very specific spot on the deck that I wanted to replicate here. So the yellow markings are accurate uh, to a very specific portion on the deck. Um, here I'm just going around the lip of the base with uh, some black craft paint. I'm not going to use my expensive uh, modeling paint for this, but just kind of give it a nice, nice border. And here we're just going with uh, various highly thin bits, you know, um, spritz of oil paint just to create, create, you know, random spots and oil drips and stains and, and, uh, you just kind of create some cool variation to the surface of the deck. Um, but yeah, so that once, once I get on, you kind of dab at it with paper towel, it just helps blend it on. And then we're just going to use some black oil paint here to create, you know, tire marks and, and streaks on the on the carrier deck where aircraft have been landing and depositing rubber on on the aircraft. So I, I, I guess I should clarify this is at the aft end of the ship. Um, so that's why you're going to see more of these these landings marks on here. And so really, that's, I'm just kind of almost like a dry brushing effect is what I'm kind of going for here. Now we're just kind of adding random spots with the with the black oil paint just to kind of create some contrast and darkening up some areas. And with all that done, we can finally attach the aircraft. Now, I don't normally like to glue down aircraft onto a base, but because of what I w was planning to do with this one, it was necessary um, <clears throat> to have it glued down so that it wouldn't move. Um, and you'll see why here. So one of the things that I really wanted to represent was when an aircraft is parked on a carrier deck is it's oftentimes chained down to prevent it from moving in rough seas. And so because that, that photo etch that I had comes with a lot of the tie down stuff, I was, I just, I really wanted to try this out and see how I could, how it would look. And, um, so that's why I needed the aircraft glued down so that it wouldn't move once I started attaching all this photo etch. Uh, here I'm using some a jewelry, jewelry chain that I got from the local craft store to represent the actual chain. Um, it was it was hard finding something that looked like chain and not like jewelry, uh, but I found one. I eventually found one, 
and attaching it to the, the photo etch hooks. And then we can attach those hooks to the correct tie down locations on the aircraft. Uh, another nice reason for having the uh, Edward photo etch set. And here you can see I'm using my old clippers to cut this chain, not my new clippers. So I did learn. Um, but it was kind of tricky trying to get um, enough tension on the chain, but also having some natural sag to it because, you know, these are heavy chains and they do, they do sag. Um, so it's just kind of trying to find this nice balance between creating tension and creating a sag in it. But I think it, I think it worked out. Um, so it's just a matter of kind of going around getting everything glued. So I'm, I'm gluing the hooks to the aircraft and then the chains to the pad eyes. Um, and now I'm going to go in and I'm using a really black wash. This is a, a wash from Citadel. Uh, this is Nulm oil to darken the chain. And in hindsight, I should have done that before I attached them all. It would have been much easier, but you know, 50, 50 or 20, 20, uh, all of the hooks are painted red. And now we can start attaching the wings. So like I said, the very large paper clip in there to provide the support uh, needed to keep these wings in the correct position. Um, <clears throat> but once you get it in there, then it's solid and you're, and you're good. And that's this is all being super glued on as well. So uh, once it's glued on, it's it's not going to go anywhere. And um, But I like the way that the wings fold. You have one that folds forward, one that folds back so that they can they're, they're not overlapping and they're not, you know, sitting really tall. Uh, just it's just really neat. Um, my buddy that I was doing the buddy build with, he was able to provide me with some 3D printed files for uh, these these stands here for the torpedoes. And uh, so this was this was fun to really get to use my 3D printer. He also provided files for these little torpedo uh, trolleys. So I have two torpedoes on stands and then two torpedoes on these little trolleys. Um, and uh, I think it's just a great little detail to show to show off the torpedoes. Now the torpedoes are provided in the kit. You get four of them, even though, it, so it'll usually only hold two in the, in the uh, torpedo bays. Um, but I believe it, it could actually carry one or two torpedoes on the external pylons on the wings as well. So I guess technically you could have it loaded up with four if you wanted to. Um, but it's just kind of fun to show off these these torpedoes like this. Um, the five inch rockets came from my spare parts, and I honestly could not tell you what kit they came from. They've been in my spare bin for forever. The depth charges here, those came off of a accurate miniatures B25 kit. Um, the Mark 82s, these are 3D printed. Um, so I, I got a file off of uh, cults.com for the Mark 82s. So you come with both like the normal Mark 82s and the Rockeye Mark 82s. Um, and then the uh, the rocket pods, those come included in the kit. So here we go, final reveal. Um, this, this was a blast to build. And what was fun about this project was I, as I was researching it and I came across that picture, I immediately had an image in my mind of what I wanted to do. And this is one of the very first projects I've had where that image in my mind is what you're seeing here. Like I was able to realize that image almost perfectly. And it just, it was exactly what I wanted to portray. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this kit. I had a lot of fun doing um, this buddy build uh, with my friend James. And by the way, if you should check out the tracker that he built, because if you think like he just, his blows mine out of the water. It's amazing. He did an entire like hangar maintenance scene with his tracker. Um, I'll put his Instagram profile um, in the description down below. I highly recommend you go check it out. It is just, he is a phenomenal builder and just did so much great work. Um, and it was fun being able to go back and forth with him. He provided me with a lot of research detail, um, the 3D files for a lot of the stuff you see on the diorama here. And, um, you know, and, and I was able to help him out with a few things as well. So it was a lot of fun, great build, kind of a, kind of a challenging kit, uh, just because it, you don't get a lot of detail out of it, but at the same time, like, this is actually like a good kit and it's, 
you know, it, it looks like a tracker. There are some inaccuracies in the overall shape. Um, I actually believe the kit is like, is short. Uh, the fuselage is still a bit too short, but I mean, you really wouldn't know if you don't know the tracker well. So if you've managed to make it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit, hit that subscribe button, give a like on the video, and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the build of the video. If you just want to chat, I'm good with whatever. I would also like to give a huge shout out to my patrons for helping support my channel and make content like this possible for you. We'll see you on the next build video.